you end up waiting 15 minutes for Henrik to turn up, and that's a lot of idle time. All right, I started recording, so it's, I, think uh, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I, IPFS uh, in web browsers and GUI working group. The double. The double meeting today. I got one of those too. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Uh, it's the one. Um, so, good one. Yeah, <laughs> it's the one. Uh, so, a couple of uh, like pre points. Uh, I am sort of currently the de facto champion of a working group that has no working group. In that, uh, we've got this PM GUI slash in web browsers crossover. Uh, so, in lieu of uh, anyone else wanting to write lots of github issues i am putting myself forward as the the schmuck who will lead the github issue charge to great glorious gooey future um but the the idea is that maybe we should uh, there was some toing and froing right at the beginning of this in web browsers gooey working group existence and everyone everyone from core was like don't have weekly meetings because then you'll have a hundred weekly meetings and then you 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 won't get anything done. And I think we're at the other end of the spectrum where we don't have enough face time yet and we're not really a team and I would like to see more of your faces. Um, so I kind of pestered David Diaz to make this a thing and everyone seemed to think it was an okay idea. So here we are. Um, but it's not, it's not too late to get out of this call if you're panicking. <laughs> um, yeah, like if, just for Kyle's benefit, I think uh, I, I'm pasting... Uh, those uh, GUI related issues yep. uh, and the recent discussions. <laughs> um, if, I, if I go to a call and it's eight in the morning, it's, a, it's an important call. So. <laughs> Very good. All right, it's the one. Very good. Um, uh, so just, uh, just as a preamble, I would really like to check in with you all, Lydell. I want, I want people to tell me how they're feeling. I want people to tell me what their workload is. I don't want it to take very long, like two sentences on where your head is at right now. Lytle, can you kick us off? Yeah, so like uh, the first quarter is nearing uh, its end. And obviously, I am far behind with my OKRs. All right. Uh, like uh, mostly uh, the number one OK, uh, like key result I hoped from this quarter was this uh, uh, addressing on the distributed web. Yep. Uh, I tried to start it uh, like, like last week, but I failed to synchronize with uh, Lars. Okay. Uh, we realized that we have uh, nearly the same uh, item, mm -hmm. and so we just I just so want to coordinate with Lars so that there's no uh, duplicated effort, especially that he created the outline, and I suspect he already have some text. Mm. Uh, so uh, this may be pushed. Let's be realistic. <laughs> okay. It may like it, it may be pushed. It's not like we did nothing this quarter uh, toward that goal. There were multiple discussions regarding uh, protocols uh, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like my, my my only concern that uh, okay. it, it had the highest priority and was not addressed. Uh, apart from that, uh, the IPFS companion. Uh, it's quite well. I'm a bit skittish when it comes to making a final release. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, 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 I'm not able to put my finger what's wrong, but I think there is like something uh, like regression, maybe, maybe related to my local machine, but I suspect the user interface was faster in the last stable, stable release. So, before I uh, make a uh, final release, I'll probably do a release candidate this week. Okay. Just and to, just to encourage others, uh, probably today on the all hands weekly, I'll encourage others to uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, um... test it before we push it. And uh, before I make a blog post uh, advertising how wonderful it is, we yeah. probably should be sure it is and we, May decide to push the blog post one release later. Okay, that's fine. Like my idea is that we, if we deliver better sharing that we discussed recently, 
that may be a much better experience and but much better reason to advertise. However, like th this release was very technical. We've added window IPFS object and uh, embedded JS IPFS. So I'm a little bit torn between advertising this, like a release for developers, and maybe we want to make uh, the actual stable release when we have those sharing and upload uh, UX improvements. Uh, sorry for like rambling, but just like th those are two, two things uh, uh, I am concerned right now. And yeah. fair enough, um, it's not all on your shoulders. I think the thing to do is is make yourself a release checklist, which includes beta testing from the rest of us. And if we all give it the thumbs up, you know, it's not you don't have to feel like you're the sole gatekeeper of the integrity of the project. Yeah, I think like. Uh, I already created a checklist, so it's like just to add an item there. Sure, totally. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. Um, I can go next. I, uh, the, the, my, my feeling was just to kind of get a sense of like, are people exhausted or stressed or happy? But Lytle has gone in full and has reported on essentially what he's been working on. So that's okay. Um, uh, but my check-in was going to be a bit more like, I'm feeling pretty positive because I, I started off on the research for the GUI stuff thinking that it might have been a waste of time. And I now am pretty confident that it was very much needed. At least it's helped me figure out a bunch of stuff that is missing in my head anyway. Um, and I hope it's useful for you guys to see it. And And I've totally kind of invented the plan of action and no one's kind of said this is terrible yet so i'm taking that as de facto thumbs up from everyone um so i'm feeling okay agatha how are you feeling you're also muted still muted okay okay now okay. i'm on yeah. Uh, in this quarter, I made the brand book for EPFS, uh, and I'm happy that we have done this because it's very important for EPFS to have a brand book for for if yeah. And next one, we had uh, GUI in in. Now uh, in Photoshop, but maybe uh, f the next uh, a a Q a quarter uh, we will have in in uh, HTML. And uh, I made the v v frame, the first V frame uh, for the desk. But as we know, uh, we will need uh, another another round. And this is the next thing that I, I will uh, do now, the next reframe. Very good. Uh, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kyle, how are you doing? What are you working on? Hi, how's it going? Uh, can you hear me still okay? I was just, I yeah. usually plug in my nice microphone. I, Forgot the plug for it. You know, USB C is a difficult. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. I so this week uh, I was uh, happened to be down in Austin, and I talked with some people over on the DAP project uh, about you know, hey, you know, if you wanted web browser integration, what would what would you want, right? Like the idea was to sort of like find the sort of like common ground for like what everyone in the space needs to do. Um, you know, distributed web implementations inside web browsers. Um, and uh, after I got their notes, I went over to uh, uh, Portland and I visited with two people uh, at Mozilla, um, Gazala and um, Dietrich, and uh, talked with them a little bit about that. Um, and the consensus uh, that we sort of put together was that we should definitely get everyone on some kind of a mailing list or something. Um, and, and, and so that we can have a place to collaborate on these issues. Um, some of the low hanging stuff was 
uh, the fact that, you know, WebRTC doesn't work very well with like hundreds of connections and stuff, right? Like it's designed for two video streams, not like, you know, BitTorrent, you know? <laughs> so, um, uh, that, so that, that, that's one of the things, uh, there actually is a UDP, uh, socket implementation in Firefox, uh, believe it or not, uh, because of Firefox OS, but it's like, you know, undisabled or whatever. And so, um, and, and Gozal has actually been writing something of a manifesto of like what needs to go into the browsers himself, uh, which is related to like yeah, socket stuff. Um, socket was what I got from them. Uh, what, what address bar your API obviously would be a nice one. And like, you know, a few other things. And the idea is just to sort of like, you know, make sure that we're not just talking to ourselves in the neck, like you know, about, about what these needs are, like trying to see how we can get the browsers in on all of these conversations. Um, and so uh, that's what I did this week. Uh, I have not sat down quite and finished writing everything up and uh, creating the mailing list and stuff. Um, but uh, we did actually, uh, the mailing list idea actually was part of an OKR. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that happened. It might have been my fault. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to be able to do that this week. So uh, I'm going to get uh, send an invite to uh, you, uh, you all, and, um, and then you can be on that list, and we can have start having conversations directly with the browser people and with other stakeholders in this space, uh, like, you know, like, you know, like the secure scuttlebutt people and, you know, anyone else that, you know, the, what for us, right. Like anyone that needs this stuff too, because we're all kind of trying to build the same thing, which is peer to peer stuff in browsers. Right. And so, um, that's what I did this week. And, um, yeah. Uh, and also I just want to say quickly, cause I haven't seen you guys in a while. Uh, you know, you've done really amazing work on the desktop stuff. Uh, it's really nice. Um, you know, yeah, I love that you're looking at the GUI side of things because, um, to me, like graphical interfaces are like the way forward eventually. Like I see this fundamentally is going to eventually has to become an interface problem. Uh, and so, um, you know, the better our interfaces are, the closer I think we will get to something that, uh, people will start using on a regular basis. So. Very cool. Um, uh, one of the other OKRs uh, that is sat very unfinished in my on my laptop is uh, the jumping off point for the conversations with multiple browser vendors and peer-to-peer -peer stakeholders, uh, the are we distributed yet .com website, which is I think was going to be a bit of a eye candy, initially like a, just an eye candy kind of make the point in a pleasing way and link to the most relevant pressing issues. Like, as you said, there's some easy ones, like if WebRTC bugs were fixed, things would get better. Uh, if WebRTC performance was improved, things would get better. And then drifting into more specific discussions of APIs that we want to see. So that, so this, what you, what you've done this week will really help, <laughs> really, yeah. really help that. I want to take a look at that site because like my, I, and I talked with Gazal a little bit about this, uh, about the idea of like us making a sort of manifesto site, right? This sort of like opening yep. idea as a public discussion, yep. and, and as in like there's a web page that's like, hey, are, are we distributed yet? You know, yep. like, this is what we need in browsers. Like yep. this is the challenge. You know, like yep. something yep. like that, and then have a mailing list link on that, and then like any documentation that comes up related to that, just so that we can get these ideas across. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. All we're really doing is finishing HTML5, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> right on. The, um, the pitch for oh, we distribute yet.com right now, uh, there's no reason why it can't be that. It, I think it was, uh, the way I'm thinking about it at the minute is to be something like uh, uh, is service workers ready.com, but slightly yeah. more, hey, Enrique. Um, but, so, but that one's very focused on some explicit specs that already exist and then issues to various browser manufacturers to say like either they're enthusiastic about building that's, it, they've already committed. So just kind of that, but we can add beautiful. in, we can add in a flavor of manifesto to the, mm -mm. to the book. Nope. Beginning. That's beautiful. Keep doing that. That's absolutely perfect. And like the, the whole, you know, I was kind of half joking with the manifesto thing, but it, you know, just, you know, like little copy stuff yeah. maybe here and there, but I'm definitely, uh, so how far away uh, through our, our, how, how far are you with, uh, the, should I take a look at it or, uh, um, I, not very far at all beyond okay. I've, I've got a, I've got a sense of how it's going to fit together. I've, I've got a skeleton there, but the hardest part, honestly, for me right now is wording is the precise short, but approachable wording for each issue. Yeah. 
um, because the, we've got screeds all over the place about all the things we need, but mm -hmm. trying to do it in a way that's kind of, we could put on the home, like this is the definition of the problem. Yeah. Um, but I think what I was ch chatting to Lytle about was um, I just need to get the skeleton up and then people with far more detailed knowledge than me can tell me where I've gone wrong and make better, better words. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is it just like a static HTML site? or that, That's what it's going to be right now, yeah. Um, it, it may get fancier and get driven from GitHub issues at some point, but eh. st static. No, no, just make it static. It's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, C'est bon. Um, I, but, so, yeah, definitely ping us when uh, you get a chance to write up any other stuff you found out. I will. Thank you. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba so, um, Enrique. How how you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. You you missed a, a quick check in from everyone. I, I had intended it to be an emotional check in to see how the spirit level of the team was, um, energy levels and whatnot. But it's been mostly taken as an opportunity to tell us what you did last week. Um, so you can pick either either path. You can merge it into one. But Enrique, how you doing? Uh, I'm fine. So in the last week, I did some bug fixes on the web UI and. That's mostly it. Nice. Um, anything interesting, bug fix wise? No, I don't think so. <laughs> preview PDFs in Web UI. You can not, you can do what? Preview PDFs. That's super cool. <laughs> uh, you forget that the, you're talking to the IPFS and web browsers and GUI team. This is exactly what we want to hear. Um, yeah. Uh, one, one other question for you. I'm, I'm aware that you also have other things pressing on your time. Um, what, what kind of availability have you got kind of for the next couple of weeks? Are you 50% on IPFS? Next stuff? week, I'm 100% free because I don't have classes. Nice. Don't forget, don't forget to read your books. Yay. <laughs> okay. I will. Um, uh, there is another person on the call, Jared, who I, I'm not sure I'm aware of who that is. Maybe that's just a casual observer, or maybe they want to participate. Hey, Jared? Uh, mostly to observe, yes. Uh, okay, carry my on. My call on GitHub is admin data roads. So uh, if you've seen anything from me, it's under that name. Okay, very good. Well, I hope you enjoy. Um, so... Um, for, uh, if anyone has any other issues they want to discuss on this call, I will happily divert everyone's time and attention to the discussion of scoping the existing IPFS GUI apps. Are we happy with the existing scoping? Does anyone share my enthusiasm for reviewing the existing scoping? Um, uh, so I think you've all seen, and I've said it enough times, there's a bunch of issues on the PM. IPFS GUI website that was my take on the existing feature set that seems to be important. Um, I may have missed some things out, but I think it's pretty comprehensive. Um, uh, there's like, there's, if anyone thinks, if anyone's got any specific questions, now would be a good time to raise them before I get a bit more abstract about app scoping. Anybody? Nope. Okay. Right. So what it, strikes me uh, the thing that i was saying right at the beginning of the call is i'm concerned that we're re reviewing the scope of the ipfs gui apps and just to confirm that's ipfs desktop uh, putting ipfs as a native integration to your operating system uh, ipfs companion the web extension and what is currently called web ui which is the html dashboard for it necessarily has to diverge because it has different use cases. I don't know. The, what I'm most interested in right now is a discussion of, is there any value in reviewing desktop as a minimal menu bar app uh, and expanding, re rebuilding web UI as whatever it needs to be? Thus, yeah, go for it. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, um, you know, so... I haven't been too privy on the scoping stuff here, so I'm not exactly sure what direction uh, with IPFS desktop. So uh, just you know, if I sound insane, just ignore me. Sorry. Yep. Uh, you know, I was thinking one of the things that sort of 
been interesting to me personally is um, that you, the desktop is sort of a potential jumping off point for uh, doing sorts of like interesting things related to like demoing like security origin level like windows that like load web pages and stuff like that right mm -hmm. um and um you know using the like it uses electron as i uh, and 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 electron's just a chrome window and so like it's a pretty short step to do things like um you know be able to load like ipfs you know content like in, in a security origin in a in a window that's like similar to the way browsers work. I mean, I'm just not, not saying this is a web browser, but like I'm saying that you could put something like this into IPFS desktop, right? Um, some flavor of this where you can like load web pages uh, or something like that. And it might be kind of interesting to see if you could like use it that way or not. But I don't know if there's like the will or the interest in that idea or not uh, to do that. But it just seems like an interesting branching off point um, you know, we can do things like IPFS colon slash slash, which we can't do with regular browsers right now, right? Yep. Yeah. The, the, conflict, the conflict that led me to this bit of work was really a frustration around the discussion. Uh, there was, uh, Agatha has done some detailed uh, uh, designs for a, a rebuild of the, a, a reboot of the desktop UI. Um, but we hadn't done the kind of prior scoping work of what app should do what and how do we want the features to be implemented. So that's kind of how we come to be here. And there is definitely an opportunity to say uh, what we think desktop scope should be. The specific conflict that I'm seeing is we simultaneously want desktop to be a minimal menu bar application and also solve all our problems from a UI perspective. Like we want it to have a file browser and there's a there's a pretty tidy file browser implementation in the existing one, thanks to Henrique. But it it's always going to struggle because it's trying to fit itself into as small a box as possible and give all the possible functionality that you might want from a file browser. So I really want to I really want to commit to one path or the other for desktop. Like it should we should either be building like a a Dropbox alike minimal drop down menu that then hands off major functionality to a web UI that's separate or desktop should be a proper desktop app and screen real estate shouldn't be a pressing concern. Um, but at the moment with the design feedback that we were getting, people seemed to want it to be both, to do both things. And that seemed like an unrealistic expectation to me. It seemed like a cause of friction that we could just decide our way through. <laughs> <laughs> like okay desktop should be the beginner's guide in which case it shouldn't just be a tray a tray menu like it, yeah that, that's a different problem i mean uh yeah i mean that from my from my perspective like the ipfs uh, uh you know desktop app is going to become the ipfs app at some point in the next like to you know, a few years or something like to me, like yeah. my I don't think I don't think it's practical for like people to like download a Unix daemon that like <laughs> is like running like on a command line and like yeah. if we want to start getting like mass cons mass adoption, mm -hmm. you know, at some point we have to have a graphical interface that works well for them or yeah. integrate into things that they use every day, yeah. and and so like you know the neat thing about desktop is that it lets us get that that massive you know more users like on a non super professional basis uh before that happens before we start integrating in browsers and stuff like that right yep. um and and so it's i mean to me like i i would like it when people go to ipfs.io there's a button they click and it installs an application that they can then run you know yep. like and and that works right now for unix programmers you know it's great for everyone down here in silicon valley but you know, I'd love to see I'd love to see like you know everyone else be able to use this technology too, um, and so like that's why I'm so interested in the browser stuff and why I'm so interested in the desktop, which you guys have done amazing work on. Uh, it's gotten so much better, and um, and and so that's sort of my thought, right? And yeah, to me, I guess in that dichotomy of like should it be minimal versus should it be a desktop application, I, I think it's just. I think it should be a desktop application. You know, I think it should have like a GUI. I think it should have like controls and like browsers. And I think that it should be able to pop up in a web page and you know, that whole thing, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's, so. that's exactly the feedback I'm looking for. And it, it, the, it, what I'm trying to do is unpick the tension between like, I think as a group, we need to decide it's either a maximal desktop app or it's a minimal 
tray app and your vote counts. Um, but this is the kind of thing that um, if you have strong opinions about it, or if you have questions about it, or you don't kind of understand what it is I'm trying to get at, then the call is a good place to ask. If you have strong opinions about it, you can state them now or feel free to drop them on the scoping issue because this is exactly what I want to bottom out. Until we as a group decide this, we can't make useful progress. Uh, Jared, did you have your hand up? Go for it. Yeah, I did. Um, so I guess it's kind of opinions that lead to questions potentially, but uh, just general, um, I'm kind of new to everything. so stop me if I'm saying something wrong, but Go for it. Uh, I see IPFS in general as, you know, trying to develop the new distributed web, kind of, in some sense, replacing the web, but keeping all the good stuff. Um, so I kind of see JavaScript uh, IPFS implementation in particular as kind of a gateway between the two. And um, so you can basically make current web uh, infrastructure apps, but have an IPFS backend utilizing that tool set. Mm -hmm. So then I see that um, any sort of desktop app could utilize that gateway infrastructure to join the two. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering if IPLD is ever intended to uh, not only undergird the uh, IPFS uh, block infrastructure and some of IPNS, but also um, almost provide like a memory object store, uh, similar to other JSON object mm -hmm. stores that currently exist, exist for the web. Mm -hmm. And in that way, by IPFS infrastructure to real-time JavaScript apps on web browsers in general. Mm -hmm. and um, and sort of tie IPFS to existing desktop applications as in web browsers hmm. uh, via those mechanisms instead of going full like full native development per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so well, can I take that yeah. a little bit? So just quickly, yeah, I mean, the idea long term is that we want to be in web browsers, like that's the general approach is like, you know, get into Firefox, get into Chrome. Um, the the problem is that the interfaces that we require in or from the browser manufacturers in order to do that are not currently available. Uh, for example, a UD, uh, socket support doesn't exist, which means we have to use WebRTC, which is uh, not designed for hundreds of connections with peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, everyone's having the same problems with that in the distributed web space. Uh, the other thing, uh, so there's just like a few things like that, like right? security origins, like is an issue when you have like path origin security problem, you know, the, which doesn't exist yet. It's a spec, but nobody's implemented it. And so um, the idea is just sort of that this could be sort of a demo of like things, the way that this stuff could work until we get to that point where we, we get more browser buy-in. Um, but no, like long term, like that's the goal. Yeah. Is, is like implementation in the browsers like that. Uh, we just don't, exactly quite yet have the, the sort of tools we need from them to actually be able to accomplish these goals. Yeah. Super good. Um, duh, 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 duh. Uh, so um, I was more railing about um, the, the question of the day for me is uh, we've been tasked with reviewing and improving the implementation of the existing IPFS apps themselves. So this is a slightly separate question to how do people make apps that make use of IPFS? Um, but it's all relevant. Um, just, just to get back to the question of the scope of the existing IPFS desktop app, um, the question on the table is, should it be minimal menu tray? Should it be maximal? Uh, I think there's some leaning towards it being maximal. Um, it, the reason why the scoping isn't limited to what should we do to desktop though, is there is also the open question of what should happen to the IPFS web UI implementation. So this is the question of, uh, the, there was a, right at the start of this project's life, there was an issue raised that someone said, like, should we just abandon web UI? So there's a there's been a slight uh, if the studies exist I don't I haven't seen them and what I want to see is a bit more kind of 
who are these apps for? And as I, my feeling right now is WebUI is trying to, trying to serve everyone and not succeeding particularly well at serving anyone. Um, not to, to denigrate the work done there, just that it needs a lot of love and attention. Uh, and it seems to be, given that it's bundled with Go IPFS, it seems to be positioned as a, a dashboard manager app for for controlling uh, an IPFS node, but at quite a low level. But then it includes high level fancy features like a spinning 3D globe that suggests where peers are and things like that. Um, so if we start making desktop a more maximal app, what what should we be doing with web UI? What's the scope of web UI? Does it still have a place? Does it still exist? Um, uh, the current feeling is yes, it should still exist. It's kind of nice to have a easy deployable admin visual admin console for a gateway for an IPFS node, but it'd be interesting to kind of pin a primary user story to each app. Like who are we trying to serve? So I think as Kyle was suggesting for the every man, for most people, the desktop app should be the go-to thing and it should be super easy to use and have a bunch of baked in expectations about your use cases and it should make those super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things, oh, sorry, Lito, actually, Lito, you had your hand up first, so I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Oh, like, that one was for uh, Jared, uh, Jared's questions. Uh, like, I had the impression that we can work around limitations uh, that are currently in web browsers uh, re regarding, like, local data storage that your distributed application can use. You, you, you just cannot rely on the local storage uh, provided by the browser because, because of the security perimeter, which does not exist, right? And uh, if you use the window IPFS object instead on your uh, distributed app, then you uh, can like rely on scoping and security perimeter that we provide in... Uh, Browser extension, stuff like that. So, uh, window.ipfs does not exist in any browser near you just yet. So, yeah, <laughs> you you are on the call. This is the bleeding edge discussion. Um, take that advice as the direction things are going in. Yeah, it's like a bleeding edge shortcut. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you if you need to, but uh, uh, if you need to, yeah. Uh, and I just want to say quickly that uh, in the context of, uh, I'm actually kind of indifferent to like whether it's a desktop application or it's the, uh, the browser plugins or something, but just like when we go to IPFS.io, like people should have the ability to install this stuff, right? Like they should be able to install, like add IPFS to the browser, like add, install the desktop and run it, right? Like that whole idea, right? Just having that. So as a, as a tiny, tiny quick win, uh, Lytle posted an issue that is we can now we can now instruct Chrome to recommend installing a, a Chrome add-on from a, any arbitrary web page. So we can have a kind of click button on IPFS.io that's like you should get you're using Chrome. You should hit this button and install the Chrome add-on. And that is like you know that's like a couple of hours work that would pay dividends. Uh, I think we're only holding off really because, uh, as Lydell said at the beginning of the call, we just want to get the, there's been loads of changes that haven't been released. And so we'd like to get soft launch that, make sure we're happy with it. And then we can update the website to instruct people on how to install the plugin. But I think as we're all kind of aware, there's bigger problems than just getting people to install the plugin at the moment because we still don't quite, the plugin is like pointing to web UI and things like that and can't be used without also going to install a binary. So, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. We need to, like the, we need to figure out how to either we, well, we either need to use JSI PFS or we need to bundle it, you know, and I misspoke. You're right. The, the plugin totally works now because we bundled JSI PFS with it. Um, I think we're just nervous about performance. That's a really good thing to be nervous about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, we're, we're uh, I, you know, well, well, have, have we, have you, I mean, have you played around with it? Like the integration of JSI BFS with the plugin? Like, have you had any personal, like, use cases? Or yeah, any, like, uh, if you, if you want to upload fi a file and you don't have a locally running uh, demand, 
you, you can perfectly fine upload the file and it will be opened on the public gateway. The, yeah, the, there is... the, the, the short story is that uploads work fine. Only yeah. if, uh, you don't, we, we cannot uh, present downloads in Firefox and Chrome, only in Brave. It's, there's very little peer-to-peer -peer about it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if we had a browser window or something like yep. for the desktop application, then we could do it there, right? Obviously, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's one of those things. Absolutely. Um, so I, uh, I'm pretty keen to keep the conversation focused on scoping of apps. And I, t I get your point that with, whether it's a web UI or a desktop or how it works or whether it's a plugin, something needs to be the entry point. Something needs to be the de facto beginner's beginner's app. Um, so, so my personal opinion is like the the focusing on desktop being uh, as small as possible is a is probably a false goal. Like it's not it shouldn't pretend to be a menu tray anymore. And we need to review the designs for desktop if that if that. But I'd like to see people fill out their their thoughts or at least just plus one existing thoughts on the scoping issue if that is the will of the group um, because it is a change from the direction that desktop is going in at the moment at the moment desktop is trying very hard to be as small as possible but it's it's not tiny <laughs> it's just a very weird small desktop app um ba -ba 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 -ba. Jared? thanks Lytle. uh to address Lytle's uh question earlier and what you just actually asked about. Uh, so my sort of mental gateway model of the browser being the gateway into new IPFS stuff, that could be easily um, applied and some of the browser limitations work around by having it, um, the browser essentially be what web UI is kind of now where the browser is the main interface to local IPFS node configuration and data, and uh, it can open channels uh, on the local daemon uh, rather than through the browser. Uh, so that, that would point to the desktop being kind of the daemon monitor in the taskbar and all the UI happening through the browser to the local instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, so that, that's the other route that we can examine. There's, there was a call for potentially considering removing web UI or replacing it with something else. The, there's a problem with deploying web UI with Go IPFS, which makes it harder for us to improve web UI outside of the Go IPFS release schedule. So that's not very good. Lytle has repeatedly mentioned that bundling a web UI with the Go daemon has led to un unlimited security issues with other people's deployments because they immediately try and open the API ports uh, and to make the web UI available to them on other nodes. So like bundling this, this HTML viewer with Go IPFS seems to set a bad precedent or at least would need a lot of it, it needs reconsidered from an OS point of view. It, it needs a definition of what its primary use case is. Like, is it an admin tool for someone administering a shared, a shared gateway, uh, or is it a jumping off point to the rest of, to all of the wonders of IPFS? Is, is it the introductory app? It seems like no, it's not that. Uh, David Diaz, did you just join us? <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. I might be a hacker trying to do something. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm, <laughs> good, good morning, Mr. Diaz. How are you doing? Hello, I'm Mr. doing great. For some reason, my camera is not working. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't want to interrupt you. I just I, I could only join now, so I just, that's okay. No so, problem. So, um, uh, I'm talking a lot about app scoping. I'm just keen to hear what people think. Uh, my concern right now is that uh, web UI is prime value is more as a node administration tool for people operating shared gateways and less as a interesting tool for people who are desktop users. Um, my bigger concern is that I don't have a clear sense of wh what user story, what user goal each app is intended to mostly fulfill. So we're, we're, we're reaching consensus on the idea that desktop is 
it would be of highest value if it was the one true place to point all casual users, it, you know, and it included introductory material. That seems to be coming across and no one has spoken against that, um, which would, which solves a few design questions. You know, we don't, we don't have to make it as small as possible if its job is to demonstrate what IPFS is capable of and be an educational tool then it is implicitly not just a menu tray application. That seems like an easy one, but that, that hasn't been defined yet. So it would be useful if people would drop their thoughts on the issue that is about scoping. So then the, next, the other side of scoping is what, what is web UI's purpose and how does it relate to a maximal desktop app and a minimal uh, um, IPFS companion browser plugin? Um, I'm deliberately not really discussing the purpose of the browser plugin because it seems pretty obvious and not really worth debating. Like its its purpose is to handle IPFS links in the browser and get you to IPFS functionality in your normal browsing routine as quickly as possible. Um, but we are left with this, like what is web UI's purpose versus desktop's purpose? Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that? So on web UI versus desktop, uh, the web UI was initially created to get people amazed with IPFS. Like not, yeah. all, not everyone would go into the terminal and play with it. But when you, for example, showed them the globe mm -hmm. and all the nodes in the globe, people typically got really excited. Yeah. We never really crossed the barrier of making it usable though. And so it was more, hey, you sell an IPFS node and you have like this really nice dashboard and don't really use it because it breaks all the time. And yep, yep. It, it, the conversation was always like that. And so I, I can see your point. Um, I don't want to, uh, I, I, I'm not sure exactly if that will lead to them almost like dropping the web UI entirely, just focusing on desktop. Mm -hmm. uh, I still think it, there is some value to have like something that can ship with the daemon, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the desktop will always be a separate install. Um, and the web UI can always ship with it even because it's a web app. And, and one of the selling points in the past was also, ah, oh, see, like even the dashboard of IPFS, it's an application on IPFS and can be divided in multiple pieces and the multiple pieces can be loaded from multiple places. Um, and so th there is like all of those bits of conversation that we had in the past, mm -hmm. which we haven't had in the last year. Like we mm -hmm. now do other demos like PeerPad and so on. Yep. to amaze people so uh yeah, yeah. I, again so, i don't know <laughs> that's i mean that, that's useful backstory because then we can sort of say if desktop does the job of amazing people about ipfs then web ui is no longer burdened with that um and we can also say that peerpad is the canonical example app for here's how you use it as an application yep sure and um, kyle Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to just throw in really quickly too that. Um, I mean, this is like a little bit beyond the conversation. So I, I'm just going to be really quick. But uh, when we make if we make the application more like a proper desktop app, we have to understand that there are three contexts that people are going to be using this with as people are different like contexts for using IPFS, right? So one of them is using IPLD and it's like IPFS as a database, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to have like a way for like people to manipulate like DAG objects and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Some sort of DAG <laughs> inter manipulation interface. Um, you know, for more of like a database level style interface. And, and then for people that want to use, you know, IPFS for distributed web, for web browsers, you know, like we have some kind of a window that comes up that like loads the web pages or something like right? that. And that like to the security origin, you know, web applications and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the idea of like our IPFS for archiving and storage and like distribution mm -hmm. of files and stuff. And that's when you start looking more like something that BitTorrent can do, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe it look like a BitTorrent client in that context, right? Like where you have like a, you know, like, like files you're seeding or, you know, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, like, you know, if the application does sort of evolve beyond what it is right now, like, it's important to keep in mind that there are, those three use cases are, are pretty predominant and that they're probably going to have pretty different interfaces that could be rolled into the same interface, but, like, you know, they're different. You know, they're not all, all going to be like the same structure. Whereas right now, I think like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like the, the dash, the sort of IPFS station really is just sort of like the file side of that, right? Like the archiving side of that, right? Um, so, you know, it gives us some opportunities to start really playing around with like interfacing with like the more advanced functionality of, the, of, of this technology. Yeah, I think, and I think WebUI 
as David was mentioning, if it, it came from the like wow factor origins, that it includes a, a basic DAG explorer. So you paste in a hash and it, it'll show you the data behind that hash. And then you can link through to any of the links in that IPLD node, um, which is neat. And so one of the issues that I've raised on the PM is, is IPLD Explorer, this kind of DAG universe browser. And that was fun, like one of the initial description docs for this start of this project. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Like that's kind of as area one. Uh, yeah. So a fully fledged desktop app would be really useful to be a place to hold that. Then there's this trade off of do we, uh, DS's point about ease of deployment. Like if we can, if we can deploy all these things as web applications, should they just, should we just rebuild web UI to be a lot better, but stick to that fundamental deployment target? But then the trade-off again is, well, with a desktop app, we have control of, we have more control. The browser, if the browser gave us all the APIs we need to build a really powerful web UI right now, then we, this call would have been a lot shorter. Because <laughs> the, the first half of the call was about, you know, the missing web UIs and uh, Kyle's chats with DAP people and browser people. Um, so there's a strong argument for making desktop the all singing, all dancing vision of what web UI was supposed to be. But if you go far enough down that line, you end up building a kind of workbench thing that you could point to any remote IPFS node and manage it as well. And then it's like, well, do, which, do we have enough energy to also build a web UI? Or should we just make sure that things are modular enough that someone who's suitably motivated can construct a minimal web UI out of the pieces that we build if they so wish? Yeah. Well, I mean, for, you know, for, for the most, I would say most of this interface could be built inside an existing web browser. I mean, really, it's just all the heavy lifting is the API interface to IPFS anyway. But yeah, you know, the only thing that you can't get is the bundling where you can get like the IPFS or JS IPFS installed in such a way that like it sort of fully works mm -hmm. within the context of that uh, browser. Um, and but yeah, you have to install something anyway. So then it's the whole argument of like, well, but, but you could actually make most of the interface a web interface. I mean, and just put it in a desktop application, but it's fundamentally just a web application. And it would more or less work the same whether it was on IPVS.io or in the desktop. And you could go that direction. The only thing you can't do is the web browser stuff. You, right. know, you can't do a web browser inside the web browser. You know? yeah. but other Maybe. than that, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. I'm, uh, I'm feeling like I myself and Kyle have, have dominated this chat somewhat. I, I don't know if, um, I know that Lytle has opinions. Um, if you, if there's anything, I, yeah. Hello. A quick comment about the bundling issue. Um, it seems like the future, uh, trajectory of IPNS is as sort of a, a version manifest that you can um, distribute uh, full application bundles like this on top of, to some degree, you could it, it essentially release an IPNS manifest for a stable version of the application set, and then update dynamically um, over time, utilizing that to uh, allow all the clients to pull as they feel ready to update. Uh, and then that would go with the web UI implementation allowing that to update rather than it being bundled with a daemon and completely static based on that bundling hmm. uh, i think I, th I think people were talking perhaps about bundling a go ipvs daemon with a with an interface but i, I take i take your point with ipns that there is some mechanism for updating things but, you know we can we can launch updates, um, but that wasn't. I think that wasn't quite the thing. I was interested in Lytle's thoughts on. Uh, did you have any opinions on this scoping question? Do you have any opinions like, on what de desktop should be, what web UI should be? Yeah, like the the the, the problem with with web UI is that people like to put it behind Nginx and expose it to the public internet. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's hard coded uh, to only work on the local host, mm -hmm. which in turn uh, means that we have at least one topic about this a week on the, on the discuss. So uh, that's, 
that, that's a UX problem or maybe that's a communication documentation problem. Uh, maybe it would be solved by web UI detecting. It's running not from the local host and displaying some kind of pain, right? And that way we would just not have this question getting uh, asked over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to, to this scoping, uh, I think that the, the main problem with uh, defining what uh, IPFS de desktop is, is that uh, a lot of people have a preference to have a small uh, application that just controls the daemon and shows the current uh, node st status. It, it, is it online? How many peers it's connected to? And uh, actually that's all. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a little icon in the tray on menu bar on OS six. And I, uh, I understand that. And I understand that there's a deeper uh, sentiment behind that, uh, which means that such small application communicates that uh, IPFS is lean and fast and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. If uh, the fear of uh, making this UI uh, provided by IPFS desktop uh, a, li a little bigger or taking more percentage of the screen means that people, it may change perception of people. When, when people install IPFS desktop and they see that it's a huge like SQL Explorer, right? Uh, enterprise application, they may get skittish. And especially if people install IPFS desktop and they see in network monitor that there are kilobytes of data going in and out because right now DHT is mm -hmm. enabled by default and your node is uh, DHT server. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those things compound and uh, may scare people away and no matter how nice uh, you you I will be, we will it, no one will care because people will like shut it down, won't uh, enable it to run in uh, in the background. And I think that's the main sentiment behind keeping IPFS desktop small. But my opinion personally is that it does not need to be small. It's just. By default, when it starts with your system, it should be an icon in the tray on menu bar. And when you press on that icon, the initial small st status should be small. Mm -hmm. Anything else, all the icons, uh, like icon for file browser, uh, icons for uh, peer, uh, peer list, and mm -hmm. like stuff with map, all those things and configuration screen, those things can be maybe not full screen, but Mm -hmm. can take a lot more uh, screen estate. It's just like I, I'm uh, kind of uh, in the between those two approaches because mm -hmm. I understand that the initial UI should be compact and I understand why people have a strong opinion why it should be compact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a pure aesthetics and it's a lot of uh, internalized uh, like uh, interface aesthetics that people have. Mm. And uh, people just uh, don't, uh, people have a specific expectation of, from applications. And that's just my idea that yeah. we, I, can, we can make it work together. Mm. Uh, yeah, all I, I wanted the, the, to add. No, super good. I, I think this is my fundamental point is that um, there isn't an easy answer to this and we're going to have to make some trade-offs and I want us to make them as a group and I want us to decide them really soon. <laughs> um, and we don't have to commit to them forever, but we have to commit to them for one like product iteration life cycle so that we can release some really good apps that at least we are clear which trade-offs we've made and we can test them out and we can get some feedback on them and go from there. Uh, um, I, I think that David was raising his virtual hand. Oh, David's got a virtual tiny little hand. <laughs> um, I'm also, before David jumps in, I'm also aware that we have almost out of time. Um, so uh, I'm going to let David speak, but not for very long. Hi, David. <laughs> I, uh, I need to jump into another call, so that's why I was raising my hand here. By the way, did you see my flashing yes? I don't know. No, no I, totally, I totally missed it. But okay. I, it felt um, good. <laughs> 
So uh, I, I agree with both. Uh, and I think like this conversation will always lead to the conversation of like doing user research and like figuring out um, how people interact with IPFS, which takes a lot of time. So I definitely agree that we need to make a decision soon. And the decision doesn't need to be um, what each app should do, web UI, station, and companion. It's more how can we converge the interfaces and make it pluggable so that we can add more features. For example, I know that Enrique, when he designed the, or when he redesigned IPFS desktop, he made it very easy for someone to go there and add another pane. Uh, and like, so you can add another pane, add another like, initially there was no pane for pinning and it was easy to add another element on the left bar and, and a pane to, to control the pinning on the daemon. And so getting to that level, to that, uh, to that, in the web UI will be extremely beneficial as well because then people can customize it as, as they want. Um, and, and then when once we have all of those modules, like all of those features that you can plug and play into your web UI station or companion, then we can decide which modules stay in which version uh, and, and, and with the user research, with user feedback, then we can decide exactly which ones should stay in each part. Go, go ahead, Holly. Um, I respectfully disagree. Okay. Um, I think uh, I think that sounds good. I think pluggability always sounds great. I think we will make we can make some really good simple apps if we know who we're building apps for. This is why I, as I'm not looking for lots and lots of user research at this stage, uh, but I am looking for us as a group to own a set of user stories for each app, where we say you know we're going to build this app for gateway admins and we're going to build that app for new users who want a desktop experience um, and from there like just come up with a short list of features that each one needs to do a really like seamless IPFS experience and not just uh, invent a bunch of features that are plug and play but like just make a good simple experience for each use case and mm -hmm. then go and then go from there okay so I would suggest that um, given that approach to almost create new uh, projects, like instead of reshuffling what is the intention of the web UI, mm -hmm. uh, given that the users now are used to have the web UI by default on their IP test daemon and they are used to have this super admin control on their daemon, um, if we decide to design like a new dashboard for node admins, which I think then like the IPFS cluster team would be also super interested on that. Mm -hmm. um, then almost like, I don't know, call it the admin dashboard or the, mm -hmm. the cluster dashboard, something like that. So that like it's clear the intention of that dashboard. Mm -hmm. And that we don't have a conversation one year from now mm -hmm. asking, what is this U new web UI? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my, point, my point was simply just that um, I, we shouldn't leave it to other people to, like if we make everything really pluggable and modular and then it's like, go make your own dashboard. Like I'm happy to get to that utopian future, but we won't get there unless we present some really coherent, simple apps first. Got it. Yeah. I see what you mean. I agree. Super cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are now over our hour meeting. So if anyone wants to dip out now is a good time. Um, it would be nice to chat to Agatha and Enrique a little more. Um, so yeah, the, the, the question for um, uh, Agatha and Enrique was, uh, did you have any feelings about all this stuff that, that other people just spoke too much and we didn't give you any airtime? Um, and it's okay to, to not feel like you have any strong opinions on this stuff right now. Um, but Sorry, if you do... from me, not yet. Okay, uh, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just uh, like to listen you all and uh, have some opinion later. Very good. Uh, Enrique? Uh, I'll think a bit more about it and then I'll post it in an issue or something. Absolutely perfect. No worries. I just wanted to make sure you, had a, you guys had a chance. Um, so the only other thing on my mind is uh, OKRs. And we can very quickly say we all feel slightly behind on them and that's totally all right. We're in the same boat. Um, but more pressingly, we also need to start specking out our OKRs for the next quarter. Hooray! But 
if we are all behind on our existing OKRs, that makes specking the next quarter's OKRs really easy because it's probably going to look somewhat similar to the existing ones. Um, so we don't need to chat about that a huge amount now, apart from to all like emotionally bond over our shared mild panic. Um, and instead, like, let's have another call at this time next week, and the subject of that call will largely be around let's come up with the scope of our OKRs for the next quarter so that we can be ahead. And so Matt Zumwalt won't let us off in like four weeks time when we haven't done it. Uh, quickly, when is the end of the OKRs? Uh, just so I, I, I was assuming it was the end of the month, okay. but I, I, that is a total assumption. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got like a quick announcement from David. Uh, seems that David created uh, the skull and he cannot start another one while this one is running. <laughs> so we are blocking his other call. All right, well, let's wrap it up then. <laughs> so uh, just, yeah, I think, I think either we switch to a different URL or we just call it a day. Um, what do you think, Ollie? I'm totally muted. I was going to say, if anyone wants to call a meeting, just invite us to one. Otherwise, let's see you next week. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Make sure to check those uh, issues on the GitHub because we had a very good back and forth today yep. already, and we would appreciate some sanity check. <laughs> also, I'll definitely look. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Bye. Cheers.